Welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, starring the one, the only, locked in, laser focused Ramon Foster, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market, where they're open 24 yeah. 7, serving hot, fresh food. If that sounds like there was an outtake right before this intro, in which Moan was just totally spaced out, maybe there was. It was, and it was me. It was me. I was trying to do some research and get prepared for the show, even though there's the best preparation is now when we're doing what we do here, DK. So, hey, here we are. Uh, our producer, Eddie, is going to have to find a bonus way to attach that footage, the raw footage of... Let's put it on our site. Let's do that. Eddie's oh, nodding God. over there. Yeah, we're yeah. going to do that. What's crazy is I thought I was laser focused in. You was like, Mo, no, let's restart this. <laughs> You're not locked in. It's just like, <laughs> you know, I have a really hard time being critical of guys yeah. who could break me in half. So I was like, <laughs> I'm like, Mo, Mo, you there? That's what the Mo was trying movie. to do for anybody who wouldn't know or who wouldn't have already seen our outtake, uh, is to log in to a, a couple of sites that are about the draft because today is the exact two week mm-hmm. mark uh, out from the, the first round. And Moan, what are you what are you feeling right now? You know, <sighs> I meaning from the Pittsburgh standpoint at number twenty overall. There's a lot that can go on, man, with this draft. You can, defense is the easiest pick for the Steelers because they always hit. They always freaking hit on defense for the most part. I think they have a higher success rate than most teams do when it comes to getting guys. Jarvis not, Jones, Artie Burns, obligatory mentions. Go ahead. Yeah, of course. But when okay. it comes down to this team re-signing in-house talent, they do a damn good job of doing it, man. It's a bunch of guys on the team now that are second contract guys. Guys You're that they big on back. the second contract thing. That is your measuring stick, isn't it? You, it you is. cite that a lot. I've never asked you about it. Because it, it gives a whole lot of credit to the, the process of evaluating talent. It gives a, a, a lot of credit to the process of, of keeping a stable team. If you're able to not recycle guys year in and year out, we always speak of like the, the changeover of, the, of teams. You know, I think for Pittsburgh, it might be more like the, I hate to say the bottom 10 guys, the older guys on the team that don't come back because if we're being real about it. A lot of the guys on this team usually get to where you, you uh, where you, I guess you say a successful draft pick. Even for the guys that, that only get one tenure, like, like they're getting the, the three years out of like a fifth, sixth rounder. They're usually getting the fifth year option when it comes down to first round. It's like, of course, Devin Bush's situation has got to be, you know, um, so I guess in due time, we'll see what's going to happen from that. But for the most part, guys here usually either sign back or they're extended a lot of the time when it comes down to them that, that are in-house Pittsburgh guys. If you were to ask me, does Pittsburgh have a, a type of guy, you know, when you walk into the room, they were drafted by that team. A good chunk of them are from the front office as far as the scouting department is, is, is concerned. And that's hard for some teams to do, man. It really is. Think about the amount of guys that switch teams, like, fast. Like, you got uh, Rocky Yassin. Rocky Yassin. You know, the, I think the safety from the Colts. He's mm-hmm. already traded. Now, I know it's a trade, but he's not there. Clearly, they felt some type of way about him, you know? There's a lot of that goes that goes on, and Pittsburgh doesn't usually have that problem. You know, their their trust and their faith in the defense uh, when it comes to the draft is, is <coughs> un, excuse me, unmistakable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see about Terrell Edmonds getting his second well, yeah. contract. That's another one that's a, a variable in that, in that whole discussion. Uh, where this pick is concerned, and really, Moan, with the makeup of this roster, it, it feels like there's a natural lean to want to add to the offense. Yeah, I- yeah, Still, and it, it, is it is that is that what you're thinking here? It it is, and um, Eddie, our, our producer here, brought up the fact that um, you know Kuiper, he's the guru of it all for the most part. He's the name still. He's, yeah, yeah. Still. There's a million people doing what he does now, but yep, he, he was the only one for a long and, while, and nobody believed in what he was doing. And now it's a full fledged show. It's a it's a, mm-hmm. it's a broadcast. Um, and ESPN has done a good job of having the hit rate on who's, you know, he's picking to go to certain places. Is it relevant? He gives us names and content. And the guy that he put in his uh, latest mock draft was Kenny Pickett. Now, of course. That caught some attention. It did. Yeah. It, it, it makes, if, if we're speaking on the business side of it, like I said, our emotions have been in this, this Dwayne Haskins situation. Like That is accurate. We've been in it, right? 
Um, and with that being said, um, it's still there's a void there. And of course, I mentioned the the 54 spot uh, when we previously spoke about him, but it still has to be filled. And he put Kenny Pickett there. And the one thing I said to you and before we were conversating about this was, does Pitt want that? Does Pittsburgh want that? You know, like, does do, do the fans want that? I, I think Pittsburgh is so, the University of Pitt is so close to the Steelers that it's like, well, I've seen him. And truth be told, a lot of the fan base in Pittsburgh didn't go see Kenny Pickett play football. So you got to ask yourself, is a guy like Kenny Pickett going to fill the stadium more than a guy like Malik Willis? Heck, Des- Desmond Ritter, for that matter, or anybody else that's, that's slated to be a, a first-round draft pick to Pittsburgh? I, I, I ask that question because it matters. Can he fill the sands and make you believe that he's the guy? When Ben came from Miami of Ohio, like you were excited, even small Miami of Ohio, because why? He played big. But then you didn't know about him. He was him. You big. Were, yeah, he was <laughs> big. Um, and But you weren't familiar with him, so you wanted to learn about him. And I think that's the psychology a little bit sometimes of, oh, I want the name, not from my hometown. Yeah, there's, there's a familiarity. And the last thing that we saw of, of Kenny Pickett was him leading the Panthers to the ACC title. Yeah. And the Panthers generally don't come with a positive context from the football standpoint because – it's been a long time since they'd won uh, anything, and he was seen as the primary reason. He obviously had other weapons, Jordan Addison and other players right. that were helping him, but still, uh, it was seen as an achievement that he did, and he did it right here. So even if you weren't a Pitt fan, it happened uh, in, in, in front of us. I just don't feel that vibe there, you know? <laughs> Me either. I, I'd almost want to say still, um, I, I go defense. I think we're locked up pretty solid at tight end. Offensive line, you spent cash money there. Uh, I, we, we discussed Benny Snell a little bit as far as running back, but I, I will say this. Um, Najee had a, a crap ton of, of, of carries this year. Do you go running back? And I don't think there's necessarily a guy unless you're going to go after the Michigan State kid. At 20, that's a fair pick. You pick running backs in the 20. You pick guards in the 20s. I'm okay with saying those type things. Wide receiver would be easiest. Just best available wide receiver if, he, if he's there. I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still looking at – Yeah, I see the Steelers as being in something of a surprising position of strength at everything other than wide receiver, yep. meaning that they don't have to go into the draft and get this position or that position mm-hmm. other than wide receiver. Yep. And if they've got someone in mind at that position, you want to talk about a hit rate. Yeah. Okay, Uh, they've done pretty well with wide receivers. And I know we can all say this or that after the fact about, you know, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Juju Smith-Schuster. Fact is, they all were NFL starters almost right away. Yeah. And that in and of itself is a hit rate. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did they get second contracts here? We'll we'll get to that. Okay, I mean, Juju technically did, you know, even if it was the one year. Uh, hold over, you know, Deontay, we'll see what kind of year he has coming up. Chase Claypool obviously needs to do some maturing. Uh, but I like their their hit rate at that position. And I just love, Moan, the idea of someone just walking onto the field. Chris Olave. F- Is that right? Chris Olave. He you like slated him? around that Ohio State. From kid. Ohio State, for anybody yeah, who doesn't Ohio know. State. Yeah. It, it's options there, is what we're saying. There are a lot of options. And I will trust the Steelers scouting department and Kevin Colbert one last time with with wide receiver choices for sure. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the latest on, on, on Dwayne Haskins and the services. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster show. Uh, we have promised that we will continue talking about Dwayne Haskins as it it's going to remain appropriate for quite a while. Uh, his his wife, Calabria, put out a, a statement through Burt Loughton of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which again tells you about the connection uh, that's, that's there and it's been forged over the past two years and change. And there's going to be three separate memorial services uh, held, which once more really underscores um, you know, the, how, how beloved this individual was. Yeah. Um, on 
Friday, April 22, there will be one in Pittsburgh uh, at the Allegheny Center Alliance Church. Um, After that, there will be the day after that one in Rockaway Township, New Jersey, which is his childhood home. Mm -hmm. And then after that at Bullis High School in Potomac, Maryland, where he where he first played. And uh, Moan, um, you know, there, this is going to be an, an outpouring. This is going to be a scene that's really, I mean, this is, this is. is and the, the, now the Haskins family has asked the Steelers and their coaches and teammates and everything else to be at the first one yeah. at the April 22 one. So we're going to see like as a community, a scene that's. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, we we saw that with uh, Ambassador Rooney. You know how that 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 memorial went. Uh, we had one in Latrobe for Coach Drake, and they uh, they also flew him down here, and not far from me here in Gallatin, Tennessee, where they laid him to rest with his family. And the, the Pittsburgh Steelers came here to pay their respect. Also, the coaching staff did. You know to finally lay him down to rest, and, and um, it's appropriate. Uh, again, when we speak on it for sure, it really goes back to. Um, the life more than anything, you know, and I, I'm, I'm hoping for sure it'll be some crying eyes. It's going to be a, a bunch of emotions that come into it and and just a lot of the things that, that come along with laying somebody to rest. But it's, it's I ain't gonna say it's cool to see him celebrated like this, but it, it really is a, a tip of the hat to see a guy like him just not pushed to the side, you know, in a sense. No, of, I, yeah. <laughs> this is a one-time thing. And, thing, and you know, him having a young wife, him being a young guy and his family, his parents being around it. Nobody wants to ever do this. You know, so I'm, I'm hoping if for anything, the good that comes out of this is his parents and his wife see the celebration of their son, you know, and her husband. And that's the beauty of, of what this this is. And um, the, the person is not here. His, his, you know, his soul isn't here on this earth right now. And, but to be able to have a remembrance of a man, it's got, it's going to be heart clutching. It's going to be, um, every emotion available. And, um, I, I just hope his family, because that's going to be the most important thing. Um, appreciate it's all it's ever, it's all you, it's ever about. It's you always, know, it's always about comforting the family. It's always about comforting, uh, you know, the loved ones and sharing stories yep. and everything else. And I think in, in this case with the, the, you know, the amount of space between the tragedy itself and the memorials, right. Uh, you're going to, you're going to see, uh, you know, maybe more of a, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, a help me out, Moan. Uh, uh, you're, you're the writer here. <laughs> maybe more of a, um, more, more love. Ground, out. Yeah. I just think it'll be, it'll be less about the tragedy and yeah. more about the life. And and I think that that's what I was getting at here. The celebration of them. Yeah. And if yeah. you go to each of, this is what was beautiful. I saw in, in his wife collaborate statement here that it was, it was, it was broken down how each one would go. Well, what you're going to hear in Pittsburgh is going to be about something that you've stressed a lot lately. The people who saw him last, the people who, hmm. you know, who, who loved him the most recently. Yeah. Then you get to New Jersey and it's a different dynamic. Then you, get, then you get to in high school and the stories that you're going to hear are going to be mostly about football and fun stuff like that. And that's, you know, this is, yeah. It's, it's again, um, the celebration of my I think I, is what I'm hoping is going to be very appropriate. And I know it will be too, because I know the group that's going to do it first in, in Pittsburgh. And you, like you said, for, for anything, his, uh, his wife now widow, gosh, Leah, in the early twenties, um, she can see this and, and not just have the incident be the last thought, but have these moments be the last thought, hearing people speak about them, hearing people celebrate them and the legacy of, of what he's laid down. And I say legacy too, because to do what he did and to claim that early on as, as we saw in those videos and actually follow through with it, there's gotta be another Dwayne Haskin like kid out there that's going to say and do those things and live it out and, and, and embrace that and maybe point back to say, that's what I'm trying to do. And because that's all it was, was a kid with his dream. And he was doing those things on the day that he, you know, passed away. So I'm all for that. When we come back, Hey Moan.
And welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's the Hey Moan segment, and today's is really cool. Uh, today's comes from Dave, and he says, Hey Moan, I'm thinking about Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers getting pulled seven innings into a perfect game the other night. Mm-hmm. How important is it to a locker room for coaches to put players in positions to reach milestones like that or maybe contract incentives? Have you seen guys get upset for being taken out uh, in comparable situations? Good stuff. That was real good. Right. Yeah. Too. I, can I be real quick uh, on this one? Uh, I'm glad that his his uh, general manager pulled him also this early in the season. After 80 pitches, I thought was the appropriate thing. That's what coaches are supposed to do in that setting. To complete the perfect game would have been for us. That was us, the fans, by the way. I, we'd have all we'd have talked about it all the time. He's one in the history books. But the team concept of what he did was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful concept, man. I want to make sure that we offer some context here. Your your son RJ is Pitching yeah, right now. yeah, and yeah, that's you're, reason you're I'm, around baseball every I'm day. Gonna, I got a game night to go to. Okay? <laughs> and if you if you're if you're the 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 dad that's watching through the fence over there, yeah. and you see a guy letting RJ throw, you know, 150 pitches early in the season. Early in the season, you're coming after him. No, we're we're that's we're not gonna do that. And for I think the way it goes for kids is you know by 60 65 on the first time on, at the bump is appropriate. Like he's mm-hmm. a Kershaw's a pro, but he's 34 years old also. Yep. And, and coming off of a you know a, a weird spring training and yeah. everything else here. And Kershaw by the way for anybody who doesn't know publicly stated his support of Dave Roberts' decision right. to take him out. He's just like Listen, man, we hit just about the right number. Yep. was actually the exact quote from Kershaw, and Kershaw is getting like five hundred million dollars a year to pitch. So, what do you want to do? Hurt him? No, and the, and the way uh, the Dodgers spent in free agency this year, no, they're not and trying to ruin year. their chances. Yeah. And every year, yeah, you're right. And to watch Atlanta parade around with their gold uh, gold stripe. But have you seen have you seen that happen, or has it happened to you in a Steelers room? Yeah, so, as far as milestones, I, so the one for me, of course, linemen don't have stats. Okay. Um, but it became a thing in our room, especially when we started to realize, man, damn, we're getting old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I came upon my hundredth start, not game, one hundredth start. 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 That, that's separate designation. You that's, have two stats in the in the Steelers media guide for offensive linemen. It's GP and GS. Yes. <laughs> and, and my GS was hitting a hundred, man, and um. The guys in the offensive line room celebrated me. Why? Because an undrafted guy, number one, been around for a while. We were young Thundercats coming in. And for that group of us to be <laughs> together for that long was a huge moment. It was it was cool. Gil bought me some uh, really expensive Christian Louboutin, like uh, boat shoes. They ended up getting me a, a, a bottle of uh, Louis the 13th. Uh, whiskey. Marcus Gilbert knew your shoe size. Yeah, that's my guy. That's, <laughs> that's my brother. I, that's all I heard out of that. Yeah, okay, yeah, he did. <laughs> and it was just a cool celebration. Munch, you know, uh, had some words to say for me in the room, and and then Marquise got his, and and then Gil got his, and I'll never forget. You know, just other players when Le'Veon first finished the season out to have a thousand yards rushing. We went out and bought him a huge, I'm talking, I think it was like a six liter bottle of champagne and we all signed it, you know, as congratulation and uh, Ben hitting certain milestones. And I'll never forget one of the earliest ones I've ever saw was Heinz Ward catching, what was it? Uh, was it a thousand? What was, what was, it what was, was his it? thousandth. And then that's actually the one I was going to ask you yeah. about because there's a lot of people who watched that and thought, man, you're kind of forcing this, aren't you? We had to. You had to. Was it, wasn't it a sh- like a shuffle pass? Was, was it in a, Cleveland? Yep. It was it was it was quick, and I may have been pulling on that shuffle pass too. Now that you now that you bring it up, but I I remember us not necessarily counting down to it, but the idea that it was about to happen. Like Hans got to get balls. He he got to get balls, and and why not? You know, it was one of those. He's put everything on the line for Come a on. long time, and it, and it was, I mean, it was obvious what was going on, and it was also obvious that the head coach. Yeah, would have been involved. He wants to show respect for the individual and and have him out there. Mm-hmm. 
that was a real milestone. Uh, yes, one hundred percent. That was that was that was part of the the plan was to get Hines Ward the ball and within the context of the team. If there was a chance, Ben could have threw a quick out to him. Yeah, he was gonna get the ball because who has the opportunity to do those like things for the Pittsburgh Steelers and to play the way Hines is, the legend that he is now, head coach. By the way, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, those things are celebrated. It's brought up big time, man. One hundred percent. What about hundred yard games individually? hundred yard, yard rushing games. Jalen, Jalen, uh, Samuel. When he went out and did that, I, I saw somebody also ask the question. We'll have to get into it. Does Coach T give out game balls? You remember the way Jalen ran that week? You talking about against New England? Against the Patriots? Yeah, yeah. Like okay. Him getting a hundred yards was huge, man. Or um, Juju with the uh, catching in um, in Detroit. I think that became the longest touchdown in Steeler history, I, I think, for a receiving touchdown. Those were huge um, uh, 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 accolades for us. It is celebrated. We don't make it a focal point because then you put the pressure on. What you if what if what if, uh, what if you, uh, remembering a, this is something of a negative example here, but like this past season, remember when John Harbaugh got in, in, into some uh, hot water in Baltimore because oh, he wanted to maintain that streak, rushing streak, the, the rushing, rushing streak. streak. Yes, you know, I like, do. And, and who, I don't remember who who the Ravens were facing, but he was like, it was in garbage time. It was, was it Jaguars? Uh, but yeah, he chased the streak. That's he, kinda, ch- he chased it's so Harbaugh. It's so Harbaugh, but I think they were <laughs> winning pretty good at the time and stuff like that. Like it, it, that right there within the when you're affecting the other team or you have an opportunity to embarrass the other team, that right there is kind of frowned upon. We definitely got to dive deeper into that one because I'm more yeah, sure it's other this, situations. This is, yeah, we're getting into weird oh territory here. But like if you're if you're down at the other team's two yard line, yeah, and there's like eight seconds on the clock, but you have a streak personally of your team where you've put up 30 points in eight consecutive games and you want and you go out there and you kick that field goal get the hell oh out of here gosh. <laughs> and of course I feel both ways about it because the other side of it was well stop them <laughs> you know when it comes down to Baltimore Hall ball them trying to maintain that 100 yard streak whatever they had going on that's kind of bush league but everybody gets their fair opportunity to get you back on tomorrow's episode of the Ramon Foster Show, we're going to talk about wide receivers some more. Uh, that's we something that we in, in between breaks here. We were saying we really want to hit on that subject a lot more. We're gonna we're gonna be dropping some names here. We're gonna be looking at some comparables, and we're gonna be looking at the Steelers' own situation, mm-hmm. their existing situation at wide receiver. Oh, bye. That's the Friday. <laughs> <laughs>